Happy President's Day, everybody. This is Bob Iacchino from Path Trading Partners, along with Mike Arnold, doing a quick holiday path chat covering individual equities. We've got a lot more time today with the equity markets closed, so we're going to go ahead and post this one today, and then we'll repost it tomorrow for those of you that want to check it out before market open tomorrow. So we're going to cover a lot of stocks here. We'll get through them as quickly as we can. We're going to be covering Amazon, which is a Seattle-based purveyor of everything. We're going to cover CXS, which we've covered before. It's the rail equipment maker. FCX, which is Freeport MacMoran, which Mike will probably mispronounce. We're going to cover Vulcan Materials VMC, which we've talked about before. And we're going to go back and look at NVIDIA with a quick new pattern and a brief teaching lesson. So some of the new ones we're gonna cover, BDX, Benton Dickinson and Company. It's an American medical technology company. They are headquartered in Franklin Lakes, New Jersey. They sell medical devices, instrument systems. Comcast, Comcast Cable, Xfinity is the brand. You all know what that is, headquartered in Philadelphia. CRZO, which is Carrizo Oil and Gas, headquartered in Houston. And they primarily drill in the United States. They have gas plays and oil plays in the Eagleford in Texas and the Delaware Basin in West Texas, Utica Shale in Ohio, as well as the Marcellus Shale in Pennsylvania. And then the Niobrara Formation in Colorado, which is just developing, not very much going on there yet. HP out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. It's actually Helmerich and Payne. It is not Hewlett Packard. It's Helmerich and Payne. Hewlett Packard is HPQ. They engage in the contract of drilling. They do oil and gas wells. They provide drilling rigs, equipments, personnel. They build camps for their personnel. So they're very deep entrenched into the shale business. Click, K-L-I-C, which is Kulika and Sofa. It's a Singapore-based company. They're a provider of semiconductor packaging and electronic assembly solutions. Hate the word solutions, always hated that. Most of their equipment goes into the global automotive and the consumer communications business, also some into computing. MKTX, which is Market Access Holdings. They are in New York, New York. They operate electronic trading platform for the fixed income markets. NRG, which is NRG Energy. It's an American energy company. They're dual headquartered. West Windsor Township, New Jersey, and Houston, Texas. It is the former wholesale arm of XL Energy. It was spun off in bankruptcy in 2004. They provide electricity, system power, distributed generation, solar and wind products, backup generation, storage, solar demand response, energy efficiency, and electronic vehicle charging stations, and on-site energy. They also do some carbon management and specialty services. PSX, which is Philips 66, that is a Houston-based energy manufacturer and logistics company. They actually operate in four segments. They're midstream, chemicals, refining, and market and specialties. So chemicals, they're mostly petrochemicals. So you can look at them at essentially an oil and gas company. URI, which is headquartered in Stamford, Connecticut. It's the largest equipment rental company in the world. That is United Rentals Industries. They've got 880 rental locations throughout the United States and Canada, founded in 1997. So that is the, again, largest rental equipment company in the world. And then we're gonna look at AVY, Avery Dennison Corporation, a global manufacturer and distributor of pressure sensitive adhesives. So you're talking about adhesive labels, apparel branding, tags, some medical products, but a lot of that stuff. This company is a Fortune 500 company, by the way headquartered in Glendale, California. So let me turn it over to Mike to show you what he's seeing on each one of the charts I just described. Okay, great, thanks Bob. This is Mike Arnold Solutions speaking. So we have our Amazon chart. This is a weekly chart, very early double, but it's way too early to even talk about that right now. We have potentially higher prices to also call it. One of the themes from this, this show will be many of these doubles don't actually happen. They're very early. They'll stuff, but we, we'll need to watch for, for example, Amazon would have to close below 7, 10, 10. However, also, since these 
are reversal patterns, they don't have to reverse. This market can go higher. So I'm also going to be calling out higher levels that are very strong GAN level projection should price continue higher. And some of these trades we will trade higher and then possibly they'll still form the double, then we'll let it trade down because these levels don't necessarily val invalidate the double. So Amazon, higher levels that we'll be watching for it should we exceed last week's high. We'll be watching for 864.35 and 881.49. Du potential double trigger, again, need to close all the way below 710.10. CSX. Just looking at this as a potential continuation play, it's now a triple top. The levels higher, we really need to get a close above the 49.13 level. Then we're looking at 49.51 and 49.89 for CXX continued higher off a key rotation on a 21 exponential moving average. FCX, we've been following. Still going to watch it to see if it hits our first target at 1473, then our potential second target at 1440. Trade will be further invalidated if we get a close above 1623. Vulcan, which did trigger on Friday's close. This is a weekly one. Not much to update it. Just want to reiterate, if we get a close above 131.66, the trade is now invalid and stopped out, or a move above 133.83, the trade is stopped out and that can happen intraday and it's only a single target trade at 107.75 nvidia pretty large potential double top we're not looking for any continuations this we're just looking for a close below the 99.11 mark this is going to be critical that's below the 100 nice round number mark where a lot of people will be watching for this we require a close below 99.11 then it's a two target trade What's interesting is we have all the way back down here from November, we have a gap that's left behind. Our second target, the 7829, just begins to fill that gap. BDX, this is a potential both-way trade. First of all, all-time highs are around this mark here, 181.76, also coming in line with 182.04 GAN level and 182.64. So should we continue higher? Those are the next two major levels we'll be watching for. If longer term, we reverse down and get a close below the 176.65, that will trigger a massive double top. So we'll update that if we get closer and don't invalidate it by the higher prices. Comcast, we are looking at this only as a potential reversal play. We have pretty significant support coming in here at the 21. So we got to get below there and then finally trigger it by a close below 74.45. This is a dangerous one for anybody. We stress the close, getting it in on a close that actually triggers the pattern. This one's exceptionally dangerous if you're attempting to front run it because of where the 21 is in the way of the possible trigger of this. If this does trigger, it is a two target trade. CRZ0. Looking as a potential reversal, it's down around some prior key support. We need to get all the way up. We're very early on this one, but this can move quickly, so we're pointing it out early. It needs a close above 34.78 to trigger, and then it's only a single target trade at 36.65. This could, however, continue lower based off the pattern. Also, there's just not levels I'm calling out because they're not as likely. HP. This is both a potential continuation lower trade. Should we break below uh, the 66.79, we'll be watching for 66.29 and 65.80 levels. If we form this as a potential double bottom and continue higher, we need a close above 70.75, but we also have the moving average in the way, so we need a close below that. So what would be preferable for, was for this to drift a little lower, get the 21 out of the way, and then possibly reverse up. So this would be another one that I would not front run at all. KLIC, this is one that I'm just looking for a potential continuation play. We got eight push in the price, looking for us to retest the 2078 level, then the 2089, then the 21 level. MKTX. Possible continuation play, 
looking for a retest of the 194.12 level. If we get above there, 195.16, then 196.19 are the next key levels higher for that one. NRG, as Bob mentioned, major weekly pattern. So what are we looking for on this one? This would be a single target trade up about 2546, and we need a close above 1832 on a weekly basis. And this may take a while to unfold. So that's what we're watching for there. PSX. This could be either a continuation play. It's still trending down. If we retest the lows, we're watching for 77.81 followed by 77.49 followed by 77.16. If we reverse up and get a close above the 80.39 and the 21, that will trigger this two target potential double. So we're not looking to go long until we get, if this were to happen tomorrow, it'd have to get above the 80.56. If it waits a couple more days, the 21 will fall into a pattern, then we'll need to close above 80.39. URI. Just looking for a potential double top here. We have this really nice gap, and it looks almost like an exhaustion gap. The gap down here, for people who study gaps, this looks more like a breakaway gap. The gap from November, we broke away from prior major consolidation. This one looks almost like an end of a run exhaustion gap, that if we get the close below 123.06, we can look to fill the gap. Still trade as a two target trade with 116.96 and 114.93s on that. Finally, AVY, very sloppy horizontal double, uh, horizontal channel pattern. We need to get a close below 78.80. And the trick with this, this is a very scalpy trade. The thing going for it is we have a major gap here. The thing going against it is it can slam right into rotation zone. So this is more of an intraday scalping trade with levels down around 77.99, 77.59, and 77.18, which then if it gets below there and we can sustain below the 21, we could log, look to target the 50 and a nice gap fill. That's all I have for you, Bob. I'm turning it back to you. Thank you, Michael. There is a new podcast out. There is a new podcast out. We go in depth on the new McDonald's straw. All right, maybe not in depth, but go into your iTunes search bar, the Money Path Podcast. It'll pop up. It'll be one of the first things to pop up with our Path Trading Partners logo on there. Also, subscribe to the podcast. Subscribe to these YouTube videos and hit the little thumbs up button if you could. That'll help us continue to produce these videos. Again, we'll put this up now and then we'll repost it tomorrow so you guys can see it and be ready for the trading day tomorrow. Happy President's Day, everybody. Visit us at pathtradingpartners.com and send us an email at support at pathtradingpartners.com. Cheers, everyone. Mm -hmm.